Um, my story, my journey, um, started about eight years ago when I was committed to my jazzy. Um, what happened, so I'd like to share what has happened during those eight years, my experiences, my challenges, and how I cope. Um, so eight years ago, I'm pulling into my parking spot uh, about 10 minutes up the road near to the giant. I'm pulling into my parking spot and I just want to drop someone off at Dallas Airport, which is 10 minutes from my home, and run some errands. And when I got back, I'm, as I'm driving home, I'm like zigzagging in the road, and I'm thinking, well, I've been driving for decades. Why can't I stay in my lane? And I was zigzagging, and by the time I got to my parking spot in front of my home to pull in, my foot just wouldn't get off the gas. Um, my brain was sending my foot messages to get off the gas, but it wasn't getting the message. So instead of getting off the gas, it went all the way down. All the way down. And the car just took off at high speed and ended up in a tree. So my trip to Dallas Airport, uh, I got back home six weeks later. So anyway, <clears throat> I had my first helicopter ride that day, and that was interesting, you know, to the hospital. Anyway, so that was eight years ago, and um, it's dehydration, and a hot summer day, and mm, the multiple sclerosis, which I have, you know, the brain sends messages to the rest of your body, but the message gets short-circuited, and that's what happened that day. So, the whole, direction of my life from then changed. And when things happen like that, a jolt, uh, we use that word, but I think we have to uh, attribute it to um, Abigail. Yeah, that was a big jolt. So, yeah. So how I cope for the last eight years is totally, um, I give all gratitude and all thanks to friends and family. I am a fiercely independent person, a fiercely private person. But when things like this happen in your life, these jokes, there are certain things you have to throw away, and one of them is being independent and being private. I had to learn to be dependent, and that is not easy, and it's still not easy after eight years. And I had to learn to throw away being private. Everybody comes to my house. Everybody goes all over my house. I can't go to anybody's house because this cannot climb steps at anybody's house and steps in front of it, right? One step, two steps. So in eight years, I haven't visited anyone. But everybody visits me. But you know the place that I visit the most? My second home? This is truly, truly a center of my life, the Western Community Center. It is my second home. And I spend, I'm here every other day, and I find the staff here, the people to be so kind and so supportive. Um, not just for me, for other people too, but you have to tell people that you need their help. People are not going to help you, you know, just like that. You have to let them know you have a need, and then they will extend themselves to help you. And that's why this has become my second home, this Western Community Center. And I think we are so very blessed as Westonians to have this community center here. The only problem I have with this center is I can't park in front of this center. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, so this center provides a second home for me in that I, I have to do exercises for my multiple sclerosis. I can't go to the gym anymore, but the center has a pool, and the pool allows me to do my exercises in the water. And the aquatic staff downstairs, they are um, fiercely helpful to me every step of the way when I'm down there. So I'm here every other day, working out in the pool, thanks to them, because I cannot do it myself. Another outlet that the community center provides for me is um, the Western Corral. I've been a member of the Corral for 21 years. This is my 21st year. 
and they are like family to me too. They come to my home, pick me up, bring me to rehearsals every week, and we do this week after week, month after month for the whole year. So they are my family. So truly, friends are family that we choose, that we bring into our lives to help us. Because I don't have family, and I can help myself. When I came home from the hospital eight years ago, it was like, okay, what am I going to do now? So. Um, my friends rallied around, and I began also talk about circles of friends. I have so many circles of friends, and it's thanks to them. A circle of friends in my church, a circle of friends in the choir, a circle of friends downstairs at the pool, a circle of friends in places that I volunteer. And also, volunteering is so important because when you have a medical challenge for the rest of your life, it's whining, 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 pitying. You know, that's the first thing you feel as a human being. But then when you volunteer, it gives you an opportunity to stop thinking about you for a moment and think about somebody else. And when you see that smile on their face, and it's like, huh, I don't know why to do something for somebody else and make them smile. So it takes the pitying out of you and focus your, your attention to help another human being. Yeah, that has been in my experience. <coughs> Abigail talked about loss. Loss is one of the first things I experienced um, at the beginning of this eight-year journey because, as I said, you lose independence, you lose privacy, and you lose self-confidence. Because before, my job defined me. My job was who I am. My job made me walk tall. I can't walk tall anymore. But I don't have that job anymore. And it's like, who am I? And um, then you have to redefine who you are and realize that your job is not over who you are. So, um, those are my experiences. Isolation is another thing that um, I had to deal with. So not just loss, but isolation. And when you live alone, it's easy to feel isolated. You get up in the morning and you don't want to get up and go to bed. And then a week goes by and you haven't seen anyone. And another week and another week. And it's so easy to become isolated. And that's something you have to guard against really fiercely to force yourself to get out there and help somebody else. Yeah. Um, um, one other thing that Steve and I talked about when we did that interview last year was transportation. Um, after my car <coughs> ran into that tree truck at high speed, there's no way I would drive again ever in my life. So I had to find transportation. And there were quite a few opportunities for transportation again in this community where we live. So. Um, you know, you can find it out there yeah, if you don't drive. Because you don't want to bother your friends all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, can you take me to the store? Can you take me to the grocery store? Can you do this? Can you do that? It gets tired after a while. So there are times when you could independently you know, get on a bus and go where you need to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we talked about helping others and we talked about getting your mind off yourself. Yeah. Now, all these things that I'm sharing with you, I don't want you to think that any of them is easy to do. They're, they're not easy at all. It takes a lot of mental strength to get up in the morning. It takes a lot of prayers. And I pray a lot. And that gives me the resolve to get up. Because if I don't get up and get out, then I'll soon become a vegetable, and I, I can't afford that. We have to seize the day, and we have to do as much as we can out there among people, you know, and not just stay in the house. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else I want to share with you? Uh, so we talked about volunteering. Okay. 
Okay, and we talked about circles of support. Yeah, so <clears throat> again, I just want to focus on the fact that um, you don't have to rely on just one circle of friends to help you, or one circle of family members. There are so many different circles of support that you can find. You know, like, I go to a support group for people with MS. They are very helpful to me too, and I learn so much from um, my meetings at that support group. I have support groups of um, volunteer groups that I go to. Um, I learn a lot from those too. So the point is, surround yourself with as many people as possible, as many different people as possible. Yeah. And you learn because, you know, learning has to be ongoing till we die. You know? So, never stop learning. And lastly, <coughs> and both Jenny and Abigail talked about that, is finding your passion. I truly believe that God has placed in the hearts of every one of us a passion, a fierce passion for something. Some of us find our passion and some don't. But that passion is in there. It may be for one thing, it may be for quite a few things. But I believe if you find that passion, that thing that you will do for free, <laughs> that, is, that is the best thing. And I was reading a day in our day magazine recently, and the writer in the magazine described her passion as her sweet spot. I have found my sweet spot. So everybody has one, and if you find your passion and you go for it, you know, of course, bearing in mind what your limits are, you know, we all have limits of how much we can do, but, you know, push yourself to find your passion and nurture it and exercise it and do it, and it will bring you so much joy. So, being in the pool is one of my passions. I grew up on an island, I'm from the Caribbean, and I grew up spending the whole day in the water. So being in the pool downstairs is a great passion for me, so I'm there all the time. Um, singing is another passion, and it's hard work. Our director is very, very, um, um, he cracks the whip, let's put it that way. But we love him dearly. And, um, you were at one of our concerts this weekend, weren't you, Rob, Bob? Yeah, the, yeah, we had two concerts this weekend, opera for the people, and went to a real world. So that's one of my passions, so just find your passion and live your life, because we are only here for a limited period of time. We did not come here to stay, we have to move on. One day we're going to die and move on, so while we're here, just try your best with the help of your circles of friends or circles of family members to do as much as you can. Yeah. So that's my story.